Hello, Mr. Judge. My name is Goldilocks. I'm called Goldilocks because I have golden hair. Well, my mom says it's golden. I just think it's yellow. You probably know me. Everyone knows me in our village, so you'll probably believe my story as well. One day, I woke up very early. I had a terrible dream, and I couldn't sleep again. I didn't want to wake up mom and dad. Mom and dad have to work so hard, you know. Dad works at the clothes factory, and mom cooks food for me and all my brothers and sisters, and she cleans the house, and she washes our clothes. Oh, it's all so much. But I didn't want to stay in bed. You see, I had a dream about a bear, a big brown bear, that lived under my bed. And of course I knew that there wasn't really a bear under my bed, but I didn't want to stay in bed because I kept thinking about the bear in the dream. So I went into the garden. I thought the night air would help me feel better. Mum always says that fresh air can make anything feel better. I went out and it was such a beautiful night. The stars were all there and the moon was so big. I decided to go for a walk. Mom always says, if some fresh air doesn't help, then what you need is a walk. While I walked, I thought a lot. Oh, I can think so much. Dad always says I live in my head while everyone else lives in the real world. I walked and walked, and then the sun began to rise, and I realized it was morning already. Oh no, I thought. I must be home soon, or mom and dad will worry about me. But I was lost. All I saw was trees, and I didn't know where I was. So I walked some more, and finally I found a little field. And in this field, all I could see was a little house. Oh, it was such a nice house. I thought it must belong to a nice old lady, or a kind but lonely man, and he would look after me while I waited for mum and dad to come find me. You see, I really do live in my head. Then I smelt something that stopped my thinking. It was so sweet. It smelled so warm and nice. So I went closer to the house, and I saw a little bowl by the window. It was a bowl of porridge and the sweet smell was honey. Oh, it looked so nice. And then my stomach made a horrible noise. Grr, grr. It sounded like the bear from my dream. And then I realized I was so hungry. I wanted to eat the porridge very much. The window was open a bit, but I couldn't open it more, so I couldn't get the porridge. I went and knocked on the door. Hello, I said. Nobody answered, but the door opened. And I thought, well, I'm sure that the nice old woman or kind but lonely man who lives here won't want me to be hungry. They will want me to go inside and eat the porridge. So I went inside and into the kitchen. There, by the window, were three bowls of porridge, a big bowl, a normal size bowl, and a little bowl. I tried the big bowl first, but oh, it was too hot. Ow! So then I tried the normal size bowl, but oh, it was too cold. Brr! So then I tried the little bowl, and it was just right. Yum! Perfect! But I couldn't eat standing up. Mum always says you must sit down to eat. So I took the bowl and put it on the table. There were three chairs, a big chair, a normal sized chair, and a little chair. I tried sitting in the big chair first, but oh, it was so hard, oof. So then I tried sitting in the normal sized chair, but oh, it was too soft, bah. So then I tried sitting on the little chair, and it was just right. Yay! Lovely! I sat down on the little chair, and I ate my porridge. I ate all of it.
because dad always says you must eat all your food. But then the chair broke. Ah, now I felt very bad. I had come into the house of this nice old woman or kind but lonely man, and I had eaten his porridge and broken his chair. What a bad girl you are, Goldilocks, I thought. And then I felt bad, because I did not want to be a bad girl. I felt so sad, but I had walked for so long, and the chair breaking was such a surprise. Now I was tired, and I wanted to sleep. Well, I thought, I am sure that the kind but lonely man. I was sure now that it was a kind but lonely man who lived here. I am sure that the kind but lonely man won't want me to be tired. So I will go and sleep, and when the kind but lonely man comes home, I can explain everything, and oh, we will laugh so much. Ha ha ha. So I went upstairs, and I found a room with three beds. Now, you might think, well, Goldilocks, would a kind but lonely man have a room with three beds? He lives alone. Maybe it is not a kind but lonely man who lives here. But I thought, oh, this man is so kind and so lonely that he has three beds so that two visitors can come and stay with him. And I felt so sad because I thought that maybe the kind but lonely man had never had a visitor. Anyway, one of the beds was big, one was normal-sized, one was little. I tried the big bed first, but oh, it smelled. The bed smelled of animals. And I thought, that's strange, because I had a dream about a bear under a bed, uh, and this bed smells like a big bear. Then I tried the normal-sized bed, but oh, it smelled. It smelled of perfume. That's strange, I thought, because the kind but lonely man doesn't have visitors. But maybe he puts perfume on the bed so it smells like a visitor. And then I felt very sad again. Finally, I tried the little bed, and it was just right. It didn't smell. Yay! And I closed my eyes and slept. Well, when I woke up, oh, it was horrible. I woke up and saw three bears, and I thought, I must be dreaming again, but no, I wasn't dreaming. The bears were very angry, and I couldn't understand why the kind but lonely man had bears in his house. Maybe the bears ate him, I thought. And the big daddy bear, he shouted, you ate my son's porridge, you broke my son's chair, you slept in my son's bed. And I couldn't believe it. Bears don't make porridge or have chairs or sleep in beds. Well, I did the only thing I could. I ran away. I jumped out of the bed and ran out of the house. But oh, the bears also ran. They ran after me. They tried to take me and eat me. They wanted to make Goldilocks porridge. But I'm a fast girl, and I had eaten and slept well. So of course I ran away and I found the way home. Phew, but oh, after that day, I have horrible dreams every night. I know now that the house belongs to those bears. But what could I do? I needed that food and I needed to sleep. But the bears tried to eat me, so don't you think those bears owe me some money? They almost killed me. Mr. Judge, I will keep my story short. This girl has already spoken long enough. I woke up before sunrise. I always wake up before sunrise. While Daddy Bear and Baby Bear slept, I made our porridge for breakfast. Yes, Bears do eat porridge, and our house does belong to us. Many animals have houses these days. I made the porridge and woke up Daddy and Baby, but the porridge was too hot to eat, so I said, let's go for a walk.
We often go for a walk in the morning sun, and it is lovely. While we walked, there was a horrible smell. It was the smell from that clothes factory where Miss Goldilocks's father works. Actually, in that factory, they make fur coats out of dead bears. So it is really quite horrible for us to smell that factory. Baby Bear always wants to know what that smell is, but I never tell him. Well, we went for a long walk so we could get away from the smell of fur. When we came back, we found the door open, the porridge eaten, the chair broken, and the bed slept in. Oh, Daddy Bear and Baby Bear made a lot of noise. Who's been eating my porridge? Who's been sitting in my chair? Who went into my bed? And somebody ate all my porridge. Somebody sat in my chair and broke it. Somebody went into my bed and is still sleeping there. Of course, I was sad as well. A mother does not want to find all these things. But I do not like to get angry. When we found the girl, I asked her why she was in our house. Well, I tried to ask her, but Daddy Bear got angry and shouted, You can understand why. But the girl started crying, and then she ran away. We only wanted to talk to her. We did not try to eat her. But we had to know why she had come to our house. So, of course, we ran after her. But she was faster than us. And if we went into the village, some people might have killed us and made us into fur coats. So, Mr. Judge, as you can see, Goldilocks has made many problems. She broke our chair, and now our son is very afraid. He won't go outside. He is not having bad dreams because he cannot sleep. So don't you think that girl and her family owe us some money? The judge did not know what to say. He was very glad that he had not worn his fur coat that day. But Mummy Bear was looking at him, and he felt afraid. She could eat him so easily. He cleared his throat. It is clear that something very strange happened on that day. We cannot know what is true. But Goldilocks is just a child, and her family is poor. They owe you money, yes, but they do not have the money. The factory only pays enough to buy some bread and cheese, you know. If they gave you the money, they would not have enough food. I can't do that. Huh, said Daddy Bear. You people always help each other. People are more important than animals, huh? Shh, said Mummy Bear. But we live in a country of magic, and someone has used magic here. I... Hey, I didn't use magic, shouted Goldilocks. Only bad girls use magic. Are you saying that because we are talking bears? We must be using magic, said Mummy Bear coldly. No, said the judge. I did not say that, but, well, most animals don't talk. Animals who can talk have magic in the family. Your mother or your grandmother was magic, wasn't she? Mummy Bear said nothing, but looked down. Ah, thought the judge, so it's true. Goldilocks laughed and Daddy Bear quickly looked at her. She stopped laughing. So, we will do this with magic. Goldilocks, you will go and live in a castle until you are 18. A magic castle, of course, but some strong boy will come and find you. And Mummy Bear, you or your husband must drink a magic drink that will make you a swan. A swan? How can a swan cook porridge? Mr. Judge, this is... A castle? said Goldilocks. But how will I see my brothers and sisters? I'll be so bored. And I don't want a strong boy. I want a kind but lonely. That's enough, said the judge. 
He banged his hammer. All this talk about porridge has made me hungry. I'm going for lunch. <laughs>